Why would you even need hardware EQ or tone control? Those units make audio files recoil in horror most of the time. What's wrong with just listening to your source and your gear in the purest way possible? Well, maybe you need highs emphasized or the bass rolled off for competitive FPS, or you're watching a movie or playing some single player stuff and you want that bass boosted for immersion, right? Or maybe you've invested in a headphone that you really, really like most of the time, but it does like one thing that you don't like so much. So the Loki Mini Plus is designed to sit in your stack between your DAC and your amp, and it provides on-the-fly hardware access to four different EQ bands so you can shape your audio when and how you need to. We're gonna take a look at the performance, we're gonna talk about whether or not it dirties or degrades the audio signal in any meaningful way, and determine whether or not it might be a good fit for that pile of you might have on your desk. You ready? Let's go! So the Loki Mini Plus retails for $149.99 US and is available in either black or silver. This is gonna be a bit of a nightmare for us today aesthetically because I now have three different units in three different colorways <laughs> comprising my stack. We're gonna be using the Heresy today versus the 3 Plus because I find the Heresy to have a naturally cleaner sound where the 3 Plus for me has a bit of character to it. Full disclosure, shit did send this out for review, but as always, there was no other compensation of any sort involved. They didn't get to hear or see any aspect of this review before you did, and it wouldn't affect anything Thing I had to say about it anyway. Design here is dead simple. On the rear, you have power in, then RCAs for both ins and outs. This is important because you don't need a shit stack specifically to take advantage of this. You can use this in any stack where your amp and your DAC are separate components, or you have a loop out for like effects, which is really uncommon outside of stuff like mixers or interface. So singular DAC amp units or combo units, something like a FIO K5, it's not gonna work here. Around on the front, you have four knobs for 20 Hertz, 400 Hertz, two kilohertz and eight kilohertz. So if you're kind of new to this, that's lows, low mids, high mids and highs. And there's a bit of a curve to each one of these bands, like a parabola. So you're affecting more than just that specific value. These are zeroed when they hit 12 o'clock and you can feel that in the pots. These are Alps. They're not super smooth feeling, but I don't get any noise at all in the headphones when I turn any of them. The knobs do kind of feel like they're all plastic. We also have a bypass switch here. That's a real deal relay connecting the ins and outs directly. So there is nothing active in the chain on bypass. That means you get a totally trans transparent or clean bypass for the times that you don't want any tone control in your chain at all. It also makes it really fun to, after you get your controls set just the way you like them, be able to A, B, compare those two immediately to hear the difference you made. This thing is all DC powered too on the internals. It does have a wall wart style plug that's considerably smaller than the plug for the Magni amp. Just be aware you're gonna need some room to plug it in. You're also gonna need another pair of RCA interconnects for this. Now these tone control devices have typically had a pretty bad or at least a cheesy reputation in the audiophile community for two major reasons. Number one, because they can, if poorly designed, add additional noise or distortion to your audio chain, which obviously you don't want. And number two, as Josh Valor very smartly pointed out in his review of the original Loki, using a software EQ plugin, you could really snipe specific EQ values to great effect if you happen to be coming off a PC or laptop, which the majority of you watching this video probably are. But not always, right? Maybe you're coming off a console where you're not gonna have the ability to run a software EQ at all. Or maybe, like me, you're not really at the level where you can just put on a headphone and go, oh, there's something weird happening at the 8500 hertz mark, we gotta fix that. The first time I opened something like Equalizer APO, I was totally lost. While it's really powerful for someone with a strong working knowledge of parametric EQing, it's pretty cold and intimidating for somebody new to the space. So using something like the Loki Plus gives you the ability to just reach over and dial up or down across those four bands to get it a little closer to what you want to hear. After all, you paid for your headphones and your DAC amp. I mean, hopefully you landed close enough on your headphone purchase to get something you were already happy with. But there are gonna be those times, depending on what you're doing, where you want a little bit more of this or maybe a little bit less of that. Competitive FPS, lose the bass and tweak the knobs until you're accentuating the footsteps in your favorite game. Single player, dial up the bass for a more immersive experience. Even when listening to music, you've probably discovered that your headphones do a better job playing to certain genres of music than others. Like you're not gonna want the crazy low end of rap or EDM when you're listening to like a light, airy indie band. So you could reach for software EQ and the learning curve, or you could just throw bags of money at the problem until you had a pair of headphones for every specific use case or genre of music you enjoy. It happens to the best of us. Or you could spend 150 bucks on something like the Loki Plus and broaden the 
scope of the headphones that you already own. But none of that convenience matters if the device that you're putting in your chain brings the quality of the experience down. You don't want to add noise or distortion or background hiss. And that is kind of a common thread when you go back and read or watch reviews of the original Loki, hence the redesign. I can't speak to that original unit, I've never owned it. And I could just recite all the shit audio marketing bullet points for how and where they improve this thing, but instead, I'll just say that I can't detect any kind of distortion, any degradation to the audio whatsoever when I put this in the chain, whether it's bypassed or not. This is honestly one of the very few times as a reviewer where I'm struggling to find a reason to not recommend this. If you already own a shit stack, it kind of feels like a no brainer to me. Whether you look at it from form, function, aesthetic, performance, it brings a lot of flexibility to the table and it doesn't bring anything you don't want to the table. Those open back headphones not delivering quite the bass you want, dial up the low end a little bit. And unlike devices from Mayflower or iFi, you're not limited to like a one size fits all bass boost button. You have more granular control over that low end. And not just for headphones either. These little desktop speakers are the iLoud micro monitors. They're tiny, but believe it or not, they've got some low end. With casual music listening, like if I'm just working here around the studio or like movie watching, I don't mind it. I actually appreciate the bass a little bit, but when I'm listening to vocals, specifically if I'm editing a video and I'm really trying to nail that timing, that edit, I don't want the bass in the vocal. It's distracting to me, so I can just reach over and dial that back a little bit. Look, if you made it this far, you already know whether this product is for you or not. If you're an audiophile with a hefty selection of high-end cans, a stack worth a used car, and a powerful grasp on the process of parametric EQing, this is probably a pass for you. I can assure you with absolute certainty that this is not going to dirty or degrade your audio signal in any way, and you'd likely just think I was an idiot. Fair enough. But if you have an entry-level to mid-grade setup and some entry-level or mid-tier headphones, especially if you already own a shit stack and you need your setup to be more flexible, more usable in more situations, or more tunable to how you specifically enjoy listening to your music, this is an easy recommend. As always, links down below if you want to get your hands on one. Any questions, hit me in the comments. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up. Shit, 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 shit.